Welcome to the Word of Life Center podcast. It's our desire that today's message would equip and empower you to see the Word of God bring life to your life. I want to talk to you tonight about what's on your mind. Don't tell me. <laughs> Don't tell me until after you hear this message. Then you're probably not going to have a whole lot to say. <laughs> there is a scripture, and I'm not going to read all of this. I'm going to kind of tell it to you. And then I'll, there's one particular verse I want to talk to you about. In Mark chapter 5, there's a story of Jesus. He comes into the, into the um, uh, nation and the area of, of, not the nation, but the area of the Gadarenes. And um, when he got there, as soon as he stepped off the boat, a demon-possessed man met him. A man who came out of the graveyard, out of the tombs, and he had an unclean spirit, and he lived among the tombs. In other words, he lived among the dead. They tried to bind him up with chains, and he'd break them off. Because uh, he'd often, the Bible says, been chained with shackles and, 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 and they would just, he'd just pull them apart. Nobody could tame him. He was so strong. Everybody was afraid of him. And all the time, night and day in the mountains, it says, and in the tombs, he was crying out, cutting himself with stones. Listen, just because somebody's walking around with the dead, now, you know people that are not saved. They're dead people walking, right? That's what the Bible says. You're either dead in your sins or you're dead in Christ. Okay? So people live in that dark world. I lived in that. Everybody lived in that dark world at some point in their lives. And he lived in that world. Not only that, he was demon-possessed in that world and, and was totally controlled, you would think, by those demons. But it says something here that I like. When he saw Jesus from afar off, he ran and worshiped him. You know, if we can ever get people just to see Jesus, not religion, just Jesus, just Je if we could just get them to see Jesus and what Jesus did for them, you would be amazed at what would happen. He came as a demon-possessed man, and it says that he came and he worshipped him. Why? Because on the inside of him, he knew there was something different about Jesus. Something was different. You hold the key to people's lives. You hold the key to their lives. You can't withhold Jesus from people. You've got to understand that. You've got to know that. We can't do that. Because Jesus is the one that can break the chains off of that man or any person forever. It's interesting, I was reading a, a, an article today in a Christian uh, magazine, and uh, it, was, it was a man in there, and he was talking about the fact that he had been gay, but God delivered him. He was actually a, I hope you don't even know what this is, a drag queen, okay, very popular. And he said he was in a bar, and he said, basically, I was a, I was a prostitute, I was in a bar, and there was another gay man there who was drunk. And he was talking to me, and he said, you need to go to church with me Sunday. And the guy is looking at him, you know, and, and, and he said, you're drunk, you're gay, and you're wanting to go to church. And he thought he was just drunk. So he said, yeah, I'll go with you. Well, that Sunday morning, he's in bed asleep, and the guy's out there honking his horn. 
honk in his horn. Get up, get up, let's go to church. So the guy, he said, well, I told him I'd go. So he got up and he got dressed. Guess what he dressed in? His girl clothes. Okay. And went to church. But listen to me. Listen. While he was there, he saw Jesus. While he was there, he saw Jesus. Thank God that they didn't stop him at the door and say, you're not welcome here. Thank God they didn't, they, they didn't question him. He came with this drunk guy who was now, I guess, sober from what the article said, what he said in the article, and they came to church. While he was there, he saw Jesus, and Jesus started working in his heart, started working in his life, and God totally, completely delivered him. Now, I've got a point to this in a minute, so just I'm going to come back to this, but I want you to listen to me, uh, because I know that a lot of people say, well, you're born that way. You're not born that way. It was interesting, the insight that he had of it being there. Okay, now this is not every case, and I'm not trying to, to, I'm not even, really this is not even about homosexuality today, okay, but just listen to me a minute, okay. But he said, he said, what people don't understand is you're not born this way, but you don't choose this way either. You get caught up in it. And he said, it's interesting that, that, that I looked around and my seven best friends were all dead of different things. Drug overdose, suicide, AIDS. And he realized something's wrong here. And God totally delivered him. And he said, it started when I saw Jesus. Something happened to me. And I'm going to show you what happened to him, okay? Something happened to me. When I saw Jesus. So this man runs to Jesus. He worships him. He cry, and, and he cried out with a loud voice. And now this is not even him talking. This is a devil talking. A demon talking. What have I to do with you Jesus. Son of the most high God. I implore you by God. Isn't that interesting that the devil's trying to get Jesus. To go against what God's. Yeah. Don't torment me. Because Jesus has said, come out of him, you unclean spirit. So Jesus said, what's your name? And of course, he started talking to them. He said, we're many. We're a legion of people. We're many. Please, uh, um, don't send us out of the country. And so he said, okay, you see that herd of swine? Go get in those pigs. That's where you belong. Of course, the pigs went crazy. Went down the side of the mountain, went into the water, and drowned. Okay? So... Everybody now is all upset about all this, okay? What's going on? And so the people ran. They were afraid. They ran into town, told everybody what had happened. So when they came back to Jesus, they saw this man. Now listen to me. They saw this man sitting with Jesus. Now this, we're not talking about days. We're talking about hours, and they saw this man who had been possessed, and I love this, listen to what it says, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. See, let me tell you something about getting, getting an open vision of seeing Jesus and understanding what Jesus did for you. It will change your mind. It will open your mind. You, you can see something that you couldn't see before. He saw Jesus. And now the demons are gone. And he's there. I love what it, I, I love this. He's sitting and he's clothed and he's in his right mind. In a moment of time. 
You can, you can think somebody, they are so crazy, they are so out of it, they are so goofy that they would never be able to understand or perceive or to know the reality of Jesus. But in a moment of time, they can see Jesus and they can be in their right mind. My thinking, the day I got saved, listen, my thinking changed the day I got saved. I'm telling you, I thought one way on Thursday morning and Friday morning when I woke up, I thought totally different. I didn't have any instruction. I didn't have any teaching. I just thought different. Why? Because my mind was right. My mind was right. The word here, and it's very interesting here, uh, when you understand this, the word there, right mind, the word is actually, the word mind there is, is it's two words. Right mind is actually a Greek, one Greek word, and it actually is a compound word. It's the word sozo freen. Mind is freen. Sozo is salvation. Same word, we talk about being saved. You'll be saved. Where Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, you've been made whole. You are healed of your plague. Same word. Sozo, saved. So, this man was sitting there in his saved mind, his delivered mind. When I woke up on Friday morning after I got saved, I had a saved mind. It wasn't a perfect mind. It didn't think all, but it thought right, and it knew right and wrong. This man that we're talking about here had a supernatural change. He went from being unclean in his life, everything, totally tormented, unclean in thought and life, to a right-minded gospel preacher. If you go study this, you'll find out when Jesus left, he said, I'm going with you, Jesus. And Jesus said, no, don't go with me. Go tell what I've done. Next time Jesus came to that town, thousands welcomed him because of this man. Because of this man. Why? Because he got a saved mind. He got a right mind. And listen, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you get a right mind. But I want to tell you something. I want to warn you tonight. Okay, listen to me. If you're not careful and you don't adjust your thinking and deal with your mind and how you think and what you think, you can slip back into old patterns and old ways of thinking and it will hinder your Christian walk. It will hinder the way you walk and how you live your life because you won't be thinking right. So what's on your mind? There's a, there's a danger today of moving away from right-mindedness. See, we have today, because of culture, listen to me, we have a, 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 such a dynamic that people are talking about, for example, now listen, the gay community. We hear it every day. We hear it all the time. This is the way God made me. This is the way I'm born to be. And you're finding out that people are starting to think that way. But it's not right. Even people who've been in that lifestyle say, it's not right. It's dangerous to allow yourself to think contrary to the Word of God and what you know is right. Because I'm going to tell you, the next step is you're going to start justifying behavior that goes along with what you're thinking now. Yeah. 
So what's on your mind? Paul feared that the church would fall under evil influence. Okay? Listen to 2 Corinthians 11.3 out of the Amplified Bible. Listen to what Paul said. But now I am fearful. Now listen to this. Lest that even as the serpent beguiled Eve by cunning, so your minds may be corrupted and seduced from wholehearted and sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He was afraid of that then, and as a pastor, I am afraid of that today. Because it's too easy to get information in that is contrary to what you ought to think. And you have to, be, to evaluate and deal with that in your heart and in your mind. Well, that's not so bad. Wait a minute. What do you mean? What's that got to do with anything? Well, everybody else does it. Wait a minute. So you've got to be careful in your Christian life because that is that word there is it is a, it's called it is a seducing word. Okay? It says that you won't be corrupted and seduced. You know seduction is not something that just comes right out front, boom, here it is. It's sneaky. But see, if you're in your right mind, you can recognize it. But you better not play with it. Well, how how does that happen? Well, Paul's already told us. He said it's just like the serpent talking to Eve. Did God say? See, listen to me. I want to tell you. There is, so, there is a lot of deception today about, well, they, they use an overriding scripture, God loves everybody. So if he loves everybody, everybody's okay and everybody's acceptable. No, you, no, no. You misunderstood the word of God. That's seduction. See, God gave Adam and Eve specific instructions. He comes along and says, Well, but did God really say that? And did he really mean it that way? Yes, he did. The reason I know that is because uh, they had to find fig leaves shortly thereafter. Their world crumbled shortly thereafter. Y'all, you listening? So what's on your mind? you're, You're in control. Of your mind. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, listen to what it says. It says, those whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe the, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The enemy is constantly trying to blind people's eyes. Trying to get them from not being able to see what's real. That's his number one thing that he does. And I want to tell you something. He is cranking up to a new level trying to deceive people and trying to get people's thinking off base. You watch it on television. You you listen to to, to different things and you hear different things. And all of a sudden it becomes the norm. You're hearing it so it's the norm. It's not the norm for God. It's deception. Are y'all still here? It says that he is the God of this world and he tries to... Blind minds. Okay? So, how does this come? How how does this 
start moving into our lives. There's a good example of this in Acts chapter 14, verse 2. Paul is preaching. Lots of people are getting saved. In verse 2 it says, The unbelieving Jews stirred up. Now listen. The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Okay, you got it? And poisoned their minds. The unbelieving Jews Stirred up the Gentiles. What did they do? They poisoned their minds. Listen, as a pastor of a church, now I'm not, don't, don't, don't feel sorry for me because it's not a sorrowful thing at all, but I, I am amazed at how many people have left this church because somebody said something to them about me or about the church or about someone in the church and the next thing you know, their minds have become poisoned and they don't even realize why now they got an attitude. Yeah, right. And then they got an attitude and then they say, all right, now you said something I don't like. I got this attitude. I'm out of here. What happened? Their minds were poisoned. You've got to protect your mind. You've got to pay attention. Here's one of the best things you can do. One of the best things you can avoid, listen to this. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 in the Amplified Bible. Listen to what it says. Do not be deceived and misled. All right, you, you got that? Evil companionships, communion and associations, corrupt and deprive good manners and moral and character. Who are you listening to? Who are you hanging around? Who are you friends with on Facebook that you read all their garbage all the time? Evil companionships will corrupt. It will poison you. Aren't you glad you came to church on Wednesday night? <laughs> It will literally corrupt you. So what does that mean? It means you've got to be careful who you listen to. Well, it's not going to bother me to hear what they got to say. Yes, it will. It's in you once you say, it's said. It's just like a poison dart. It's in you. And if you're not careful, it'll spread in you. It'll spread in you. So you've got to be very careful, very careful who you listen to, what you listen to, what you read. Yes. Let me give you another one. Genesis chapter 26. Now I'm going to back up to verse 20, uh, 34. Esau was 40 years old. He took two wives. Lord. Bless his heart. That's, that's a problem right there. Judith and um, base math. Okay? So Esau is the son of Isaac and Rebekah. Okay? And he took two wives. Now listen to what it says in the next verse. They were a grief of mind to Isaac and Rebekah. Listen to me. Sometimes things cause you grief of mind. You've got to be careful that that doesn't weigh you down to where you can't make, can't make a simple, normal decision in life. I've been around people that certain things weigh them down, and I hate to say this, but sometimes it's family members, and they can't even think straight. It's just a grief of mind. To them. One, another translation calls it bitterness of spirit. You literally, if you're not careful, you can let people start influencing you, and you don't even, you don't, you know that it bothers you, and it's there's a grief there, but at the same time, 
you don't realize it's not just affecting that relationship. It also affects your relationship with God and other people. <clears throat> I'm telling you, you better be careful. Well, what do you do, Pastor? I want to tell you what you do. You start praying, God, what do I do about this? How do I deal with this? And I'm not going to counsel with you tonight and tell you what you think you could do because I don't want to get in trouble because you're going to go do it and then say, well, Brother Sam told me I could do that, <laughs> whether I told you or not. But the point is, listen to me tonight, okay? What's on your mind? Is there a weighing down all the time? Or there are people around you and when they're, when you're, you, you, it's just what you're weighed down, there's a grief of mind. Listen to me. It'll kill you. You can't let, you cannot live your life that way. You either have to make the adjustment to deal with it where it doesn't cause you any grief or get some space. Now, if it's your wife or your husband, you better figure something out. Okay. But my point is, that happens. I've been around people. I remember before I got saved, there would be people that when I was at work, they just weighed you down. There was just a grief. There, it caused just a bad spirit. You better learn to deal with that. It'll mess your mind up. It'll mess up who you really are. Next thing you know, you're not going to be serving Jesus. Amen. Let me show you another one. Luke chapter 12, verse 29. Jesus said, do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. Nor have an anxious mind. The King James says it is a doubtful mind. Do you understand, listen to me, when you are worrying, when you are anxious, you are not thinking clear? You can't worry and be anxious and be thinking clear. You can't, you can't do both. Why? Because the very word anxious means to be distracted by cares. You become distracted. You remember Mary and Martha? Jesus came to their house. Mary just sat down and just started receiving. Martha was running around all over the place, trying to feed everybody, take care of everybody, make sure everything, all the sheets were changed, you know, everything was ready. They had food on the table and cooked and comes in there mad because Mary's not doing it. And said, don't you care, Jesus? Well, Jesus didn't care. He wasn't, he wasn't com concerned about that in the least bit. He made a statement. He said, Mary's chosen something you didn't choose. See, if you're not careful, you'll spend your time thinking about and worrying about stuff that you absolutely have no control over. And then wonder why your thinking is off and you're distracted from the things of God. You've got to be careful about that. You've got to fight that. You've got to be cautious about that. One translation says... You live in careful, careful, full of care, suspense. Da, 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 da. Like what, what's going to happen next? I don't know what I'm going to do. Da, 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 da. You don't have a clue. I know people live their whole lives like that. They, they don't live anywhere near the ocean, and they're worried about sharks. <laughs> you think they could be in that pond? <laughs> I'm serious. That's, people, you get off. If you don't, if you, listen, if you're not willing to let that saved mind work in you, you can start getting over in that place of fretfulness, care-filled suspense. Then fear starts dominating your mind because then all those things that you imagine could happen, you start being fearful of them. The next step is the things you fear, you attract. 
Listen, I'm not really a brave person, but I found out being brave is a lot better than living in fear. A lot better. A lot better. I learned that when I was a teenager. I don't know why. I guess even though I wasn't serving God, God was helping me, teaching me a lesson of how to live life. I don't know. I've told y'all some of you this story before, but, but there was a guy in town, Lloyd Kirkland. He was a big, you know, bodybuilder kind of guy, and, you know, and he ran around with another guy, and they were both basically bullies. <clears throat> I, I used to just try to avoid him. I don't want to, look, just leave me alone, man. Just, just tried to avoid him. And I was at the drive-in theater one night. I don't know what the movie was, couldn't tell you. Didn't go to the drive-in to see the movie. <laughs> just so you'll know. We were double dating. So I was in the back seat with, with the girl, and my friend was in the front seat with, with, with the girl. Okay, we're talking, <laughs> eating popcorn. <laughs> Knock on the window. Guess who it is? It's these two guys knocking on the window. Hey! You know, just acting like fools, you know. Something changed in me. I, I, I have to tell you, I don't know what it was, but I was a different person after that night about fear. I just made up my mind. It's crazy to be fearful. I'm not going to sit back here and listen. And I, I, it was a two-door car. I pushed that front seat up and jammed the guy up against the steering wheel, jumped out of that car, grabbed him by the neck and just started pounding, around the neck and just started pounding him. Never had any more trouble with Lloyd. He never bothered me again. But what I learned, listen to me, what I learned from that was it's a lot better to face something and to deal with it than to live in fear and anxiety about something. Then I found out I was being biblical. <laughs> that that's what Jesus said we ought to do. I, 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 I don't like fear. I fight. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to be fearful. Because it gets you nowhere. But see, if your mind's not right, fear will just start whoom, whoom, just coming into your life. You have to fight it off. I, I was afraid of, not terrified, but afraid of heights. And I worked one summer building a high-rise building uh, uh, at at Grambling. I was work, going to Louisiana Tech, working there, building a high-rise dorm in, at Grambling. And I had to be on top of that building all the time. And boy, it bugged me. Finally, one day at, at lunch, instead of eating lunch, I said, I am not going to let this control me. And I walked here and I looked over like that. Walked a little closer. Finally, I put my toes right over the edge of that building. Fear was gone. I didn't jump. <laughs> but my point is, listen, what are you thinking Catch yourself. Wait a minute. I, I do this all the time. To this day, I talk to myself. Wait a minute. What are you thinking? Your mind will start running off in a certain direction. You better grab it. Get back over here. Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. What's on your mind today, Sam Carr? You better pay attention. Then Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6 says, Those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh. Okay, so your mind is where you are, where, however you're acting. But those who live according to the Spirit, wait a minute, of the faith, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I'm, gonna preach, I'm preaching on this Sunday on peace. On peace. See, if you want to be a carnal person, and I don't have to tell you what carnality is, you know. And you wonder why your mind is kind of off. Well, there you are. There you are. Everybody still with me? Let me read you another one. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Listen to this. 
God was talking here about people who've gone off into an a erroneous lifestyle. Again, there's homosexuality here, but, this, but again, that's not my point tonight, but listen. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God give, gave them over to a debased mind. God gave them over to a debased mind. Oh, that word there means worthless, rejected, reprobate mind. This is the way you want to act. This is the way you want to think. Go for it. You're on your own. Let me tell you, don't you think God won't still do that? Okay, you want it that way? That's what you're thinking? That's how you want to think? That's how you want to live? Go for it. Good news is, he's always there to pick you up. He'll love you, and he'll, but he's not going to do it while you're thinking like that, while you're acting like that. Everybody still with me? <laughs> I know this sounds a little bit um, strong tonight, but, but listen, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? Ezekiel 38.10 says this. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you'll make evil plans. Can I say something to you? Okay. Just because a thought comes in your mind does not mean you have to act on it. Well, I thought it, so I'm going to do it. See, it says a thought came in their mind, and they made an evil plan. No, you don't. Let, I, I would be in some serious trouble, and so would you, if we acted on all the things that came into our mind. I'd be in prison for murder more than once, over and over. Just because a bird flies over your head doesn't mean you let him make a nest. You have to be careful. Everybody has thoughts. The devil will try to put thoughts in your mind. You better know what you're thinking. What, what's on your mind? What are you thinking in your life? Because you start making plans over some thoughts, it's going to be bad. It's not going to be good. It's going to be bad. All right, here's the bottom line tonight, okay? Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love. What's that last part? Sound mind. A sound mind. Do you know that's the same word where it talks about the man was sitting and in his right mind? God has given us a sound mind. I, I love this scripture. The Amplified Bible says it this way. A calm, y'all ready? Calm, well-balanced mind with discipline, and self-control. That's yours. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you get a saved mind. What you do with it is up to you. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word there, renew, is more of a word it means to renovate. Did you notice that when you got saved that everything bad didn't leave your mind all at once? You had to renovate your mind. You got to tear down old walls, put up new ones. You got to renovate it. You got to deal with it. That's what the Word of God says. We're transformed because we change our mind. Here's another one. I'm going to talk about this more Sunday, but listen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 
Okay? You want to be free? Try doing that. Listen to what happens in verse 7. I love this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. See, when you go to God, He comes to you. And He he guards your heart. He guards your mind. That word guard there comes from a military word where they are actually walking the wall of a fort, guarding the walls. So you have help with this. It's not something you have to do on your own. Isaiah 26, 3 says, I'm going to talk about this Sunday, but you, he, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Perfect peace, mind stayed on you. That's the way to live. So what's on your mind? What, what what are you thinking? It makes a difference in your life. It makes a difference. You can have peace or you can have turmoil. And I'm talking to people who are Christians. Now, the Bible says that the wicked have no peace because their mind is not right. I don't care how smart somebody is. That doesn't mean anything. So I want to challenge you tonight. Pay attention to what you're thinking. When you lay down tonight and before you go to bed, before you close your eyes, before you go to sleep, what's on your mind? And if you don't like what's on your mind, you need to start talking to yourself. No, no. We're not thinking that way. No, we're not going to think like that. No, that's not what I believe. No, that's not what I expect. You got to recognize where it is. Well, I had a bad dream. Yeah, the devil will try to make you have bad dreams. You better deal with it. Rebuke it. Stand against it. Sure. So I want to challenge you. Pay attention to what you're thinking. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Word of Life Center podcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and Twitter or at our website, wordoflifecenter.org.